So let's move right on to the, you know, sister of the NBA, the WNBA. So right now the WNBA is experiencing just the same type of conversation in regards to social injustice. So U.S. Senator Kelly Lofter, who's also Atlanta Dream's owner, um, made some pretty crazy statements. Um, she pinned a letter to the WNBA commissioner once she found out that they approved um, the ladies wearing these names on the back of their shirts, and their jerseys rather, similar to the NBA. Um, and in the letter, she basically stated that the Black Lives Matter movement was a political agenda and that it promotes you know, exclusion and that it shouldn't be permitted um, the WABA standing behind it shouldn't be allowed. Um, so she received just a tremendous amount of backlash about these ridiculous statements. Um, personally, I feel this is nuts because the WBA is 82.7 black women who are the players. And so if you think for one second, these black women don't have brothers, don't have fathers or have not experienced themselves the racial injustice that have occurred in our country that they don't feel strongly enough to stand behind this, then you're nuts. And let's not forget, this is the owner, the WNBA owner of a team in Atlanta. And this just goes back to our conversation of how tone deaf it was. Here I go talking about the NFL, but when they had the Super Bowl in Atlanta, you know what I mean, where there's all this historic black history has been, and you're tone deaf about the injustice that are going on. Um, so I just want to just also, uh, read Kelly, uh, Lochner, She basically stood by her words when she did receive the backlash. Um, she basically said this sports have sports have the power to unite us, but the WNBA has embraced the black lives matter, uh, movement, a radical movement that seeks to destroy American principles. I stand with Donald Trump. I stand with the American flag, which has endured for 244 years. And I will not apologize for it. My message is simple. We should unite around the American flag. We should keep politics out of sports. We shouldn't promote movements that encourage violence. And I will not be silent about it. Um, no, it's crazy. Like, I, um, so I, I was going, you know, I, was, I, was, I had time the other day. I was going back and forth on uh, Facebook <laughs> with, with somebody. A friend of mine, she had posted up. Um, because of everything that went down Fourth of July weekend, you know, there's the, the a little uh, girl uh, was shot and killed in a, in Atlanta. So with everything that was going down, she was just like, you know, are you are you, all you people that are anti law enforcement? Are you happy now? And I had to correct her. I said, well, that's not the question. The question is, are you anti police brutality? Right. Um, you know, like we don't have a problem with every single police officer that's out there. What we have a problem with is police officers breaking the law and, you know, killing ultimately unarmed black men and women. So that's where the, the, the problem lies. And she, she actually, you know, she took a, a, a look, look at what I said and was like, you know what? Yeah, you're right. That should be the question is whether you're anti-police brutality or, you know, or, or not. And um, so just, you know, just seeing all of this stuff, uh, you know, that's been going down. But I mean, it doesn't surprise me because, again, she's a, she's a Trump supporter. And uh, this is the kind of rhetoric that uh, that Trump puts out there. But like you said, and we're talking about, you said, what is it, 83% African-American woman in the uh, in, in the WNBA? Yeah. You know, I, I think she needs to go. The players are calling for her to go. You know, every time. Um, in, in typical Trump supporter fashion, she was misinformed. Uh, yeah. to call the Black Lives Matter movement radical and uh, promoting right. violence uh, is completely incorrect. Um, but that's standard from anybody who supports Trump. We, we've already seen that through the three plus years he's been in office. Um, I think as someone who is an owner of a team, as someone who holds a political seat, yeah. um, this is, is a terrible statement for her to make. Um, again, being misinformed, not understanding what the real topic and what the real issue is to say the thing she said, I, I agree with the players in saying that she should be removed because mm -hmm. why, why would you want someone like that in a position of power within your league when they can't even relate to the players in the league? So, and this, I love that you just said that because this is a, a, a continuous conversation that we've had in the past about leadership and those who are, who are in the higher up positions that cannot relate 
to these girls on the on, on the court and you know um she is someone that's an owner that doesn't have day-to-day contact with these with these women right and so for you to make a bl- blanket statement like know your audience know the people who are even who are making you money you know what i mean and so i think it's extremely tone deaf and sensitive and she is misinformed much like many trump uh, uh, supporters Uh, and i just think that she's speaking from a place of privilege to again say keep politics out of sports um and by her saying that she's she's categorizing you know black lives matter movement as a political um movement but i just think um how can you keep politics out of sports when when the president (laughs) <laughs> is always stepping his toes into sports. Right, but not only that, it, you're speaking from a place of privilege to tell 82.7% of Black women who play for you to keep the Black Lives Matter out of sports when, at the end of the day, when they when they get off that court, they're still Black. When they're on the court, they're still Black. When they're driving home in their nice cars to their neighborhood and they get pulled over, they're still Black. So you can't, we can't, we can't check our Blackness at the door. And so when I hear that, keep it out of sports, we like, you can't, you can't. Just like Kaepernick couldn't keep it out of NFL. It's like, you can't. This is the reality when these players are in Chipotle getting, you know, harassed. When they are getting harassed in all these spaces, you can't keep it out of sports. Well, I, I, don't, I don't think we should keep politics out of anything. Um, that's first and foremost. And then, you know, it's, it's ironic to me that politicians love to say, oh, keep politics out of sports. But they love to get the sports endorsement. Like, Trump loves to loves to state that Robert Kraft is his friend, that Tom Brady is his friend. So they love to call on these endorsements from athletes. But then when the athletes speak up, it's like, oh, but let's keep it out of sports. No, it, it, they should be able to, to speak their mind and express themselves on any platform they're on. And again, it, it was a poor choice of words from her. Um, I think the league should definitely look into her credibility as an owner. Um, right. Because if you're that far removed and that far detached from what's going on, especially in a city like Atlanta, especially in a league that has 80 plus percent of their players who are Crazy. black, then maybe you shouldn't be an owner. Simple yeah. as that. And and just even that comment you hit on the nail when you, when you spoke about just them saying keep it out. It's only convenient to keep it out of sports when it's not in agreement to your belief. Just like when Laura Ingram said, you know, Drew Brees has an opinion. He's an outstanding athlete with an opinion, but then LeBron was told shut up and dribble. So it's only convenient to these white privileged women for these players to have a voice when they disagree with the movement that they cannot relate to. So, um, you know, to, to kind of enclose with that, they, the, the WNBA hasn't, um, has yet gave a decision on what they're going to do with her and if there's going to be any consequences, but there has been a tremendous outcry from these women who feel just disrespected by their owner and rightfully so. Yeah, and listen, it's not to the same extent, um, but the NBA had to deal with something similar to this with Donald Sterling. Um, yeah. You know, after years and years of him exhibiting racist behavior, uh, they finally had to get rid of him when he was caught on audio tape. And I think the WNBA is going to have to step in and figure out, you know, what's the best case scenario here? And I think it is going to have to be to remove her because if I'm a player on that Atlanta team, I wouldn't feel comfortable playing for that organization. Yeah. Well, a lot of players have spoken out. Um, so, you know, I know it's going to be an ongoing thing, so we'll see. Hopefully by, by next week's uh, show, we'll have, a, have, have some positive news for you guys at home. And uh, she'll have been, you know, told that she's going to have to put her uh, shares up. Yeah. But they say, let's see get this dance. You about to lose your job. You about to lose your job. You about to... <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, no, but you know what? Listen, when it's your time to go, okay. you go. This is Teresa Weatherspoon, better known as Teaspoon, and you're watching Real Fans, Real Talk. Live from the camp. Uh-huh. This is Real Fans, Real Talk. Real Fans, Real Talk. We as real as you thought. Uh-huh.